Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. This is the next generation Think Bamboo podcast, and our guest today is Jane, directly from Germany. Hi, Jane. Hi. <laughs> Great to have you on board. Uh, you're the very first um, next generation um, student uh, of Bamboo, which I'm um, having a podcast with. So it's um, highly interesting because uh, I hope we can pick your brain and see a little bit how you see the whole bamboo um, nowadays and, and future, of course, because you will probably be uh, the one of the makers and builders of, of the bamboo future. So, uh, hey, um, why don't you tell me a little bit uh, something about you? I think you study at the um, Hochschule Rhein-Main in, in Germany. <laughs> Yes, right. That's correct. So it's a university of applied science and arts, and it's located in Wiesbaden, which is close to Frankfurt, for those who are not like familiar. Um, yeah, and I do my master's in uh, Wiesbaden, or uh, let's say I, I finished them uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And the field that I'm studying in is called uh, cultural heritage protection and uh, building in the existing. And it's really um, tightly uh, connected to the masters of architecture which is also where I first got in contact uh, with Bamboo um, because they offered a series on um, yeah, climate-friendly construction. And that was my first um, yeah, connection with Bamboo because I haven't yeah, thought of it before. So that's how I got into it. That's, that's really interesting. I mean, two things which um, uh, seem interesting. One is, I mean, that uh, uh, the, this German university is already like focusing and innovating with bamboo, right? Because I've heard of lots of universities who say like, oh, we have to plan first and let's wait five to 10 years and see how things go. And, and this university is really like taking off with bamboo. And also recently, I think um, like a week ago, you were in Africa, right? A bamboo seminar. Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I think it all started um, like almost two years ago when the the first contact with bamboo happened at the university because there was a like a course that was also interdisciplinary open which is why why i was able to join from like outside the architectural um profession field um and the first part uh in dealing with bamboo was designing a a a bamboo learning center in cooperation with an NGO from Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how it all started. So the first post part was actually just theory. But then after we directly uh, drove uh, well, dove into um, a hands-on project, which was located within the university, where we tried to work with sun sustainable materials such as clay and bamboo. And then we started building a small pavilion as a summer school. And that was like all the bamboo courses that were offered um, were organized by the same professor, Sasha Louisport. I think you know him, right? Of course. Yeah, so um, he's really the, the head behind all, all this. And then, yeah, there's always different students coming in um, with their different expertise, trying to join, um, learn about bamboo or, yeah, give uh, an influence from their backgrounds in that. So this is uh, highly interesting because I, I, I believe that like right now in Europe, building with clay and bamboo is not right now like on something very popular, right? But it could be because if you think of sustainable alternative to glass and, and cement and all the uh, normal uh, buildings are also wood, right? Um, bamboo being a giant grass is, uh, and, and clay, for example, are local uh, materials. Well, not the bamboo is not local yet in Germany, right? But yeah, no. um not not yet, but who knows when, because France, Italy, Portugal are already planting um, different projects, bamboo fields there within the agricultural context. So who knows when Germany will start that too? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, yeah I that... think the, the more also is, uh, um, students and architects will start like um, looking for bamboo, the more demand there will be. And obviously uh, people will start planting it. <laughs> On the long term, right? <laughs> or yeah, short term. True. So that like really obviously depends on the the production chain of where you get the materials from. That in the end is half of the way which makes something sustainable or not. Like for now, of course, it's not really climate friendly to say we're gonna build something with bamboo in Germany because of the delivery chain that you technically have behind importing the bamboo from even if it's Italy or 
uh, francs, but uh, if you could instead use local wood, local. it would at that point still be more sustainable. But at the same time, I think that should not stop us from like trying to face uh, or just have a look at different opportunities that can be implemented, like maybe not for now, maybe not for the next 10 years or like however long, because also it's a question of like how how easy would that be to do that in Germany because of the climate conditions that are just different. We also have to bear that in well, mind. It's absolutely doable. I mean, if you think of the Mosul bamboo in China, where they have like in winter one meter of snow on top mm -hmm. of the Mosul bamboo, Germany is a... Uh, Easy, easy for bamboo. Bamboo can adapt anywhere. You know, it's more of a, a mindset and political um, challenge. Yeah, um, I, I believe so. And regarding sustainability, you mentioned uh, probably a forest or, or timber is more sustainable. This would be interesting because it would be how, what do we measure? Do we measure like the energy used to, 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 to grow something or to transport something? Or is it the time and the speed something grows until it's uh, mature, which uh, where bamboo obviously, obviously will win, right? Because the, yeah. once the bamboo plant is mature, it, it's ongoing production and timber, uh, depending on if it's uh, what kind of forest, right? It, it does always take more time, right? And, and once you cut the tree, well, the tree is gone. Yeah. Uh, it, and it's tree versus giant grass, so it's also kind of an unfair uh uh comparison compare, right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Absolutely. like comparing uh, i don't know uh, a fruit and a vegetable which uh <laughs> two different things <laughs> but th those are actually the comparisons which uh working with bamboo you have to make because as you initially also said like bamboo was not on your radar right at the beginning you're like okay i like um architecture interior design i'm gonna study this and then suddenly you discovered bamboo <laughs> And Cobb and, and probably all the other alternatives, right? Which are highly interesting because um, because they're also like more ancient and knowledge. Like before in Europe, also the Cobb buildings were a thing, right? <laughs> like yeah, before, it, before, <laughs> before, before, yeah. before, yeah. It was also cool to see how like different regions in the world have yet implemented or like... Um, use bamboo for like obviously not only ancient building techniques but also more modern things that then attract tourists and are kind of like a like a sign of saying this is what we can do with bamboo and mm -hmm. like in the back of my mind I knew and of course I've seen pictures and photos of um for instance nice uh, hotel resorts that they did somewhere in Bali but then uh, it's also interesting to be to busy yourself with the other side of bamboo which is then just the use of it and um for instance for like um more rural areas to to have it really as something that's reliant and not like a luxury product exactly. which is uh, something that i found really interesting and then learned throughout the different seminars how that can be or how that this is a goal to change the perspective of bamboo in africa like the only relation that i have to bamboo are the experiences within africa so I went to Ghana last year and then to Mozambique last week. Um, but it was, it's highly interesting to also try to get in contact with the people who have already worked with bamboo, uh, because this is where we learn the most. Like we, as the Europeans or like as the German students, we only have the experiences that are being offered to us by the university and we can either take it and try to learn from it, or we might not get in contact with bamboo unless we go abroad and then meet people. So I think it's a nice network that you also have through the university it's awesome i mean uh, think of it um just within where, where you're right now and you're already like getting this international experience and seeing like how people are implementing uh, bamboo and and the perception also which is very different in europe to africa or all other continents because it's still kind of seen mostly as the poor man's timber um yeah. Also because of lack of knowledge regarding bamboo, regarding building and all the, the process. So um, everything I think that the next generation will bring here, the more you learn, the more it will add value also to, to this amazing resource, you know, um, because it's not just one dimension, which is like building. It's, it's like it's super holistic. As you know, it's the, the, the whole 
ecosystem, water, air, topsoil. It impacts everything, and and everything is is like regenerated with bamboo. So um, it's it's really highly interesting, and that's why also I'm doing this podcast here <laughs> to to get more people on board, right? Um, yeah. To 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 uh, see um, to help people understand that bamboo um, basically is something they should they should dive into. They should start to learn. Um, how can I use this bamboo, even if there is no bamboo, or sometimes there is bamboo, but it's not the right one, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Because most architects l- like to um, use like the, the straight Colombian bamboo, which is the specific Guadua type, which is super straight. Um, well, yeah, there is a straight one, but there are many who are not so straight, and you can still build amazing things with that. Um, yeah. So um, it's it's highly interesting. So um, a more specific question: You said um, you were um, the latest seminar, like last week, last week, right, in mm-hmm. Africa, and I think you visited like three different locations. Uh, yes, yes. So the um, seminar started out in Maputo, which is the capital city of uh, Mozambique, and that's where uh, the more theoretical part of uh, the um, or the input part of the workshop took place. So we uh, heard lots of talks uh, from different people uh, in the country, like also some who are like already having experiences with bamboo, um, others who are trying to uh, reinforce bamboo more. Uh, in different areas and there were also some people um, from uh, other countries and other um, corporations that have also yet had more experience with it and then we heard lectures of um, two people uh, who developed a bamboo construction kit in their master thesis um, and that's also where then the workshop was connected to uh, mm. because uh, we were trying to set the frame uh, like the theoretical frame for developing a bamboo construction kit um, mm. so we haven't had uh, a hands-on experience or didn't make a specific design on it because that's going to be part of the upcoming seminars but we kind of made the groundwork for it so we um, tried to think of like how do the people live uh, who's going to need um, which uh, access to which tools to then treat the bamboo or to work with it. Um, yeah, so that was um, what we then did when we moved to Inyaka, which is an island uh, just across the bay from Maputo. Mm-hmm. And after we went down to Ponta, which is also where we uh, visited a bamboo farm by Paulino Botao, I think you Paulino, might know yeah. as well, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, we visited his farm. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go, to walk around that much uh, due to medical conditions, but um, it was all like impressive to see it from afar because... Uh, down in the south of uh, Mozambique, that's what we were told. It's not that common yet to have bamboo, or it's like it hardly exactly. grows. Yeah? That was one of my question, follow-up question within your your uh, uh, explanation. Now here is the situation in Mozambique regarding bamboo. Is there endemic bamboo, or are they kind of starting right now, like with plantations? What's the situation uh, so- there? <laughs> Obviously, I'm no expert to say that. Yeah, but... so a better person would be someone to uh, from Mozambique to ask that. But like what we were told in the seminars is that if there is a like bamboo more up north where it gets a little more or more towards the inland where it gets more tropical. But mm-hmm. then in the south, it's really not yet a thing. But mm-hmm. still, um, they see a big potential in that area because um, it directly crosses or like the board they share borders with. Um, South Africa there and mm-hmm. lots of South, South African then build their resorts uh, just across the border and then Istanbul. use the timber from Mozambique so this is where they see potential that like because it's a touristy area and we all know like you can do impressive things with bamboo so why not try to implement it there that's the impression that I got of the the motivation behind the cultivating the bamboo down south as well but that's the, great news because then they have already kind of existing market. You know, that's one of the the key points. If if you want to start a new industry, you need the market. If you just start the industry and have to seek for the market later, that's gonna be really hard. <laughs> yeah, so it's not yet there because no one mm-hmm. has let, built that much with bamboo. Yeah, but, but there's a I guess potential for change. Uh, yeah. If the perception also changes, which is then the key, the yeah. key point. Which again is the next generation the knowledge where you're yeah. part of it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. 
So um, okay, um, this is this is uh, interesting. So the situation is is at the end, it's not so different from Germany. You know, there is some bamboo, but not a lot. They're not building a lot. The climate is 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 warmer, obviously, um, but it's not super tropical. It's like it's like dry, humid a little bit, depending on where, right? Yeah, because it's like I think Mozambique has about three thousand kilometers of coastline, so it is really huge, and the yeah. regions vary a lot. So you can't really say within the country there's this and that area because mm -hmm. it's it's so different. And I'm I only I've only seen like a small part of the south of it, so I I wouldn't rely on all my sayings about this too much now. But um, I know that they have bamboo up north, but yeah, they see a big potential in it, which is also why they're trying to to um, build a, a boarding school mm -hmm. yeah. uh, where you can then also learn how to how to build or treat bamboo. But that's like the next future steps. And for now, they're focusing or the focus of the of Paulino's company is on on the on the bamboo construction kit because it's going to be effective for the population because uh, Mozambique is uh, always being um yeah affected by a lot of natural catastrophes i think just yesterday and a few days ago there was a cyclone cyclone hitting um the coastline and this is why like i try to build resilient houses with bamboo who are facing the different weather conditions absolutely the bamboo houses are beautiful because they move and they're like flexible like we should be also <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they try to to elevate the the ground floor level as much as they can so that like because they have a lot of floods there so that like um you could for instance maybe put your things on a second level there was also a guy um giving a speech about um a, a design for a house that they had done i think already 10 years ago which was basically the same principle with bamboo and then saying okay you might need an a second um floor which is like elevated where you can put your things while the flood is coming and then you can move things down again so makes um, sense yeah it makes <laughs> sense and it's crazy to see that like this 10 this was 10 years ago and we're still having the same discussions and um yeah which just states that it's still really actual, actual to talk yeah. about it yeah and uh, what can you tell me about the bamboo construction kit i mean i can imagine this could be like a, a, a super a tool if you have like a construction kit, you know, oh, I need a house with, let's say, 100 square meter or 200 square meters. And the construction kit will help you like to know um, how much material you need, how to connect the bamboo, uh, how to build it resiliently uh, and all that, right? Yeah. So um, obviously it hasn't or we haven't finalized our results yet and like put it uh, put it in a paper to give it to the next people working on it. but. I think it's not going to happen in that way that you say like I want this and that many square meters and then you can build with it but it's probably going to be like an adaptable system so like you'll have a base and if you can afford more or if you have more money to to build uh, you can adapt certain uh, modulus to it because um like the the least uh, it should provide is like basic housing um with like not too complex technologies not too much of a complex details when it comes to connecting the bamboo and then also the use of the tools that should be involved can't be too high yeah. because even if you know someone where you can like rent a drill maybe you don't have a proper saw to cut the bamboo so yeah. that's something that we all uh, yeah th those were the problems that we talked about a lot like how how can we do it and we won't know like how do people do it normally like maybe they gather and build a house all together so it might just take a few weeks maybe they are on their own and it will take longer so this is why it was also nice to be um, in cooperation with some of the students from Mozambique who then had more insight on it so we worked with them together mm. but still they also live in Maputo in the in the capital city and the construction kit is probably going to be more relevant for people who live in more rural areas where then access to different things that you might need to build the kit is going to be different so it was really hard to do that and also i think it's good to always be aware that we as the white people we can't solve it we can just go and maybe try to find a way to provide some help if if uh, accepted and if uh, reasonable but still, I think that's also really crucial when trying to work 
in a different Absolutely. country, especially in, in Africa. Um, uh, yeah, that's just what I also took from it. And already last time when I went to Africa, when I was in Ghana, that was something that I was really aware of or became even more aware of by being there. And and now this compared to Germany, I mean, you're from Germany. So basically, maybe one day, Eugene will say, okay, I'm going to build now a bamboo house in Germany, right? This could be uh, the, some future scenario. So, yeah, who um, knows? Who knows, right? But who what knows? are your... What are your thoughts there and, and like, um, or ideas or projects? I mean, I know you, you're like starting and everything, but maybe have you already thought about like this or, or how, how do you feel regarding um, your future regarding work also um, in, in, in Europe or Germany? Um, I mean, Germany is like still currently <laughs> number one uh, economical power in, in Europe. And um So it's uh, it would be interesting to see how how you being a uh, next generation uh, see the, the 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 potential there and 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 the situation of, of course the situation currently geopolitically is is super complex and all that but that aside just um looking at what you know already of the potential of bamboo and the situation of um let's say a climate in Europe and in Germany um What 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 do you think there? What do you what are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I haven't put that much thought in like trying to build a, a house made of bamboo in Germany mm -hmm. yet, actually. So uh, I think for now it's a funny image that pops up in my head because you have a certain like when I think of bamboo houses, I will have a certain image of it, and just taking a house the way it would be um, built somewhere in like. A more tropical area for instance and just putting it in germany wouldn't work of course right. um because like the the thing that we are concerned about most when building our house is like how do we keep the water out and how do we insulate the walls so that would be interesting like i haven't probably there is some research about it and like um uh, ways how you can implement bamboo in using yeah i mean if you go back to a bit more ancient building traditions in Germany, you can, there is some materials that you could replace with bamboo. Uh, so I think it might just be visually really unexpected to see a house made of bamboo somewhere here. Um, and yeah, I, I'm intrigued to see, uh, to, to know more about things that have already been done there. But at the same time, it's also, I think, quite common that things that are being built from bamboo do surround us, even if we don't know about it, because there's so much furniture being built from bamboo. It's used for so many... Um, bamboo flooring in Europe. Big flooring thing. is really popular. Yeah. Then I don't know, at the fair in Dortmund, I think you were there last year yeah. as well, yeah. were you? Yeah. Like, there was also a bicycle being built from bamboo. So Beautiful. I mean, it's it is really... It is more popular than I think... We do think it is, mm -hmm. um, but yet... Um, It's still a niche, of course. We're talking yeah, about something niche. which most people really don't have yet on their radar because it, it's such a uh, um, like really niche thing where people also miss like, or are not yet having their understanding, you know, what's possible. Most people, when they see the first bamboo bicycle, it's like, wow. Wow, it's but, like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> yeah, but um, actually, once you understand bamboo, it's like, absolutely normal i mean this thing is gonna uh, take uh, better the vibrations of the road than steel al aluminium or whatever other uh, dead material right because it's organic it's it's, it's flexible it's just beautiful <laughs> yeah, and um, i think that there's also a big potential there because mostly the things that are coming from a certain niche or and also that are being part of like the sustainability um chart kind of are mm -hmm. those that are being rewarded at the moment in the building sector so if you build something really sustainable and you also come up with something new like it's gonna get attention and people are gonna be like oh i haven't thought of that so i think that like um this is something that will get popular either way it will also get some critics because this is also what happens if you if you're the first person or kind of you belong to a minority doing something for the first time um but this is what like where all change starts in my opinion so like exactly. it all comes from down somewhere from some opinion and then you have to convince people of the advantages so i think um yeah the more people are getting involved in that 
in that mindset of being like, okay, we can implement bamboo for different things that we also might not yet know. Because as I said to you uh, before the talk, like I'm not an expert on bamboo and I don't want to claim being one, but still I think it shouldn't stop me from being interested and engaged in the scene. Absolutely. And I think so should everyone else who is um, yeah, aware of the the problems we're facing with the climate crisis and of course it's not going to be tackled down to just one issue we're having in the world and by using bamboo you're not going to solve everything but um it's just a decent thing we can try to do and focus Absolutely. on so this is why i i think it's it's nice to experience it as a young person already the to get to get in contact with it even if i don't know where it leads me in the future maybe i don't i'm not going to do something with bamboo in the future but i'll always have an interest for it and see like where the scene is going and then think of the time when I was also part of, yeah, what happened in those days. Yeah, and it seems like yeah, the, the university uh, where you are is, has kind of interesting um, like approach uh, where there is like the theoretical um, um, module and then like there are optional uh, practical modules who really help to better uh, get an understanding of, of what the whole theoretical idea is, right? And, yeah. and a little bit more what reality looks like because um, I feel like the, a lot of students who, who uh, go to the classical universities and once they, they, they have their studies done, they kind of start from zero because they have almost zero practical you know, experience, which is a pity because uh, depending on how it takes years to get there and then they kind of just start with the experience. And on the other side, uh, I mean, um, what, what you've been sharing with us is like, sounds really exciting. I mean, um, if, if I would be in your age, I, I would probably do something similar, you know, because Great. imagine having theory, then being able to go in other places and see how people are trying to solve some um, challenges. For example, uh, there in Africa regarding the, the extreme weather, um, extreme uh, water situation and all that. Um, there are always... Uh, like like good solution needed and, and people have to use like uh, what's around what's available and ideas and and bamboo is uh, one potential solution there and not just regarding building right i mean even the floods the bamboo actually if you have plantation where there is a lot of flood there are specific types of bamboo who can survive below water like yeah. for half a year not all types but some yeah so they're actually they help to absorb the the uh, the additional water and the plant after the water is gone again is is uh, like adapted to that and of course it helps with erosion control it helps with all those things a little bit like mangrove but yeah. on a different level um and the good thing is that it grows faster than mangrove because mangrove really grow very slow uh sadly <laughs> yeah um, yeah um yeah okay um <laughs> So uh, <laughs> I love being saved, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um and and um what are the next um seminars there regarding or what is your what what's your um uh, outlook uh, regarding the the studies there currently? Um are you like g finishing uh, your your studies or or are you like um where are you there? I mean this could be interesting in case other people say wow, I I I think this is so interesting. Um mm -hmm. How long does it take? Um, where can I apply, you know, and uh, get them on board? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so, sadly, but at the same time, good for me, I, I did graduate now, or like I'm still enrolled, but I finished my, finished my thesis. So I'll not be an a, a enrolled student at the university anymore, which will make it quite tough to then join the upcoming seminars um uh, but out of interest maybe there's going to be a way or i will at least follow on social media what what things are being happening there because like i follow the pages from the university um but i know that the series is going to continue so the whole uh, series is called climate friendly construction and then they offer various theoretical and practical um uh seminars right. on it and it's yeah. as i said it's interdisciplinary open so it's not only for architecture students we also had some civil engineers working on it and um i think someone who studied something similar to water management or like environmental management um so like it's really 
open, which is a good thing, I, uh, in my opinion. And I know that uh, the cooperation uh, with uh, the NGO, I think you also did like a talk with Rabia Sherman from yes. Go Colorful Ghana, right? Yeah, like, we're going to put think... a link here in the YouTube to that uh, <laughs> podcast over here. Yeah. Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know that the cooperation with uh, them is probably going to uh, remain and there is a plan of like going to Ghana next year, but I don't know about all the specific things that are being planned, but I know yet that they are on one hand going to pursue the connection to Mozambique about the bamboo construction kit because of Paulino Botao. And there will also be like, there will be further connections with Grow Colorful Ghana, I think. And also, uh, we were in contact with um, another person working in Colombia. So I also think maybe there is a potential there that uh, things are going to be happening there. Mm -hmm. I know that um, like most of the students are always really eager to join in things that are being hands-on. Because this is, as you said, like it's what you learn the most about. Because when we were in Ghana last year, we made like as the Germans that we are, we made like a whole plan of what's going to happen, how long does it take? And in the end, like, yeah, that just wasn't the case. Like we just had to wait for long times to, for different things to be delivered for um, the to show up for people. And it, in the end, the biggest learning was that you really should not make a plan because things are going to change anyway. And you can't really calculate on how long will you take to work with bamboo if you have no experience with it. And so be flexible. That was, like bamboo. Yeah, you have to be flexible. <laughs> yes, right. As you said. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think um, apart from like the learning that you can get from working with bamboo or also with clay, um, or other um, organic materials or um, uh, more climate friendly materials, uh, you can also learn a lot about yourself while joining those courses. Because if you go to a different country, you have to adapt, you have to be flexible again, you have to forget what you thought was being a standard or and just be open to the people, listen to them, work with them if you are interested in it. And then you can, like, it's also about personal growth. That, mm -hmm. that was also like the first initial reason for me was that like oh i can go to ghana with this seminar i want to go and then i saw oh they work with bamboo that's even cooler so it's just a win-win situation but then yeah obviously you need to be open to yeah explore new cultures if you want to join the uh abroad uh, session of the seminar but there's also if you say like no i just want to stay in germany and still learn about bamboo you can still so go and uh, yeah the university offers nice courses on that and yeah i think it's exciting to see what's going to happen in the future i will at least watch and uh, i think maybe some of the next students are going to be here as well who will be part of this uh, and they have probably also interesting things to say and, and do you have any recommendation if somebody's like oh um what should i like uh, uh be uh, focusing on or as you said actually it's not just architecture it's really broad because at the end everybody's gonna like work together and the more knowledge there is uh, the better right yeah the more diverse it comes definitely yeah so the thing is that like this is not a, a study subject itself so it'll be like i have a curriculum that yeah. i have to attend to the architects have one and then this is like we call it like an optional course you have yeah. to make a certain amount of optional courses and this is one of the courses that you can choose. Okay. So um, I would say if you're interested in that, definitely do choose Absolutely. both courses. Um, Absolutely. And then there's, but there's no maximum to it. I also, I think you just need three, but I participated in, in way more because I, I just thought it was so nice. And it's not about the, the credits that you get for it because, yeah, that's not what you're going to remember at the end of the day. It's more about what you learn. So yeah, if you're interested in that, or if people are interested in that, I would recommend uh, signing up for the courses, and you won't regret. <laughs> that that's that's very good. And maybe it's not the the direct credits, but maybe the indirect uh, when you have your curriculum vitae, and uh, maybe you'll be looking for a job soon, right after your studies, and you'll send your your uh, letter. People will see, oh, uh, she was there and did this and that. So like she's. Uh, open-minded and uh, this is a person who's uh, eager to learn more and and to to uh, like open to challenges and all that and that's kind of the person you want also to have in your team at the end right you don't want a person who says like oh we have a problem um well somebody should fix it you know 
you want people who <laughs> yeah there are people like that you know yeah so um i think that's absolutely uh, that will help also uh, in in your case uh, to to find hopefully a very interesting job and and challenge for for your future so uh, yeah. double w's yeah you know? i think it's it is a qualification that no one can take away from you exactly and i doubt that there's going to be like an employee uh, an employer saying like oh you went there and did this oh no i think that's bad exactly. so It's just if you if you're passionate about it, you can explain why you did things, and they see what the outcome of it was. It's just it's a good it's a good point to to yeah also have on your resume, but also for your memories and for the things you learn. So absolutely. <laughs> so Jane, um, I think uh, we we got there. We have uh, slightly more than half an hour already. Um, uh, I'd like to remind our listeners that if they want, they can sign up to uh, Think Bamboo on uh, YouTube and uh, 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 whatever, uh, TikTok and Instagram. And um, we'll share also, if you have um, links to uh, your work, your posting, I don't know, um, maybe on um, Instagram or, or uh, somewhere, we'll share those in a blog article which uh, will be a summary of what we've been talking here for 30 minutes <laughs> for the people who are busy and have no time of, of consuming the 30 minutes um, podcast. Um, and uh, I don't know if you have any closing words um, or anything you would like to share. Um, I think just go for it. Get go engaged it. with bamboo. Awesome. Get engaged with bamboo, plant bamboo and use bamboo. Jane, thank you very much for your time. Uh, congratulations to finishing your studies also. And, thank, you. thank you for uh, having me. <laughs> thank you. And all the best for your future. Well, you too, JJ. Thank you. It was amazing to be here. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay, let's keep.